The views expressed on the following program are not necessarily those of WPSL, but they might be, because it's all up to what the host of the show, their callers, and then when they have guests, it's it's them. It's not WPSL, but the show's host, guests, callers, and those who want to respond to the show. So let's get with it! Martin County Roofing and Independent Insurance Agent Rudy Howard present the African-American scene with the one and only Rudy Howard. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Always glad to be with you here on a Wednesday night. I am really pleased to tell you about the Hispanic Heritage Month. And on Friday, September 16th, uh, the Treasure Coast Democratic Hispanic Caucus is hosting our Hispanic educators who are running for office this election. Uh, please join us in welcoming, welcoming them. Carla Hernandez Matz, Dr. Karina Balderos Robinson will all will both be present at this event. Uh, September 16th from 12 noon to 1 p.m. at the Education Association of St. Lucie County, 371 Midway Road, Fort Pierce. Okay. Uh, You want RSVP, you can uh, call 418-3851. I will tell you, I'm a very happy guy today. I finished my last certification for my carriers this morning. I am now fully certified and ready to go for the Medicare season, which begins next month. Now, folks, this isn't something easy. He has to do this every year. You have to do this every year, right? Every year. Every year. Wow. And a lot of them have minimum passing requirements. Like some have a minimum passing test of 90%, some have 85%, and you get a certain number of tries to pass them, and then if you don't pass them, then you're just kind of out of luck. One of the one of the serious issues uh, for me, who's been doing it for a while, if you don't get your certifications, they won't pay you. So all the customers I have on the books that I have accumulated over the years uh, with Humana or United Healthcare or Aetna, if I don't get their certifications, they don't pay me. So there's some serious motivation for me to uh, get those certifications, but I, I will wholeheartedly admit as I get older it is more challenging to do all them daggone tests. <laughs> I've noticed something similar to that with everything. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay, guys, tonight. Here's the topics for tonight. Uh, this first one is a carryover from last week. Top 10 reasons... Family is important. Okay, top 10 reasons family is important. That's topic number one. Topic number two. I think the GOP has shot themselves in the foot with their position on abortion. Mm, I know that's going to be heated, but... I think the GOP has shot themselves in the foot with their position on abortion. Topic number three. Poverty and the uninsured rate dropped. How about that? We'll talk a little bit about that. It may not be permanent, but it is what it is right now. And here's another controversial one. Topic number four. Not everyone mourns the queen's death. 
not everyone mourns the queen's death. Uh, I'm sure that's going to get some of my conservative friends in a, in a tizzy, but it's it's an absolute fact, and uh, we'll we'll talk a little bit about it. Okay, but I'm going to start. Oh, and if you want to call in, the phone number is three four zero. One five nine zero. That's three four zero one five nine zero. Skilled operators are standing by. A whole slew of them. They all yeah. consist of well, me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The top ten reasons family is important. We we got started on this. We didn't get it finished, so, uh, so I'm going to go quickly from the beginning. Uh, the family is has a hierarchy, the father, the mother, the children, and probably members of the extended family. The family has a structure, and this structure creates a conducive environment for growth and learning. Two very important processes. So structure is number one, the number one reason. Number two, security. At some point in our lives, we all need protection. We are born helpless as children, oblivious to the dangers of the world. One of the most important roles of the family is to provide security on all levels, physical security, financial security, etc., Young members of the family don't have to worry about keeping themselves safe. The adults handle that responsibility until they are old enough to look out for themselves. So, security. If you disagree with any of this, you know, I I welcome your input. These are just, there's an article that I found and, and it talks about these 10 key elements of of, of, of keeping a family together, important uh, elements of family. Love. Love is the nucleus of everything. With love, anything is possible. The family is built on compassion, kindness, and affection. The family is built on love. We all need love to add to any kind of value uh, this I'm sorry we all need to add any kind of value to the society we live in because it is through love that we can give our best I think that's pretty important love Although people listening, sometimes there's a lack of love in families. And families have to work hard to try to get that love that is so important to keeping the family unit as one. It's a challenge, not easy. Education, number four. Education is in two major forms, formal and informal. Before we, he- uh, before we head out to school and start the journey of formal education, the home front is our first school. We are taught manners, told stories with lessons to be learned, and we pick up things from parents and siblings. The family provides the first level of enlightenment and orientation needed to function effectively in society. And I talked about this last week, but but I'm gonna talk about it again. Uh, The former superintendent and I became pretty good friends And one of the things that he told me is that one of the key elements for helping children uh, out of poverty is words. 
when they are in a household where words are spoken correctly and in variety, that helps the child grow. When there is a lack of words in the household, that does hinder the development and puts all of the burden on the education system. But then they'll learn words from their friends at school. Yes. You know, they'll bring these home these words home, or they'll hear them at home and bring them to school. Yeah. Either, either way, they get in trouble. So we we have to try to calm down how we talk in front of the kids and correct them when they say things they really shouldn't. There, there's things that they really shouldn't say, being children. Well, in, in our household, we corrected Trevor with the way he said words. And uh, he was accused of not being who he was because he spoke proper. Oh, I have a stepson like that. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, st- a dark-skinned stepson. When he opens his mouth to speak, he sounds like a college student. Yeah. You know, and uh, it, it, it really blows people away because they don't expect that. They don't see that coming. He starts talking, and they, they can't figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, number five. Uh, a sense of belonging, and this is pretty important. There is nothing as reassuring as being a member of a loving family. It gives a sense of belonging and security. A family is like an emotional support system with no expiration date. Now, let me tell you why that's important. That is how gangs secure your kids. If they don't get a sense of belonging from their family, gangs give a kid Mm -hmm. a sense of belonging. Thus is why they join a gang. So uh, keep that in mind, you know, Listen, it, it is a fight. I, I can tell you, you know, I, I'm very proud of my son. He's now 30 and he's a father of three kids. But boy, I went through a struggle where kids were trying to take him in a direction he was never supposed to go. And I wouldn't let him go. And he was trying to go to fit in. And... uh it was uh, sometime a very ugly battle. But at the end of the day, he's a, a terrific kid, and I'm very proud of him, and he's a very, very good father. But it is a fight, and it is a fight worth having. Number six, esteem and identity. Esteem and identity are listed on the hierarchy of needs of humans, personal esteem, and the desire for respect from others. We all love to be respected, and part of love is respect. You respect the people you love, irrespective of their ages. I think, as a man, I'm going to say, this is really important for girls. We can get uh, esteem and some identity from playing sports. You know, you play football or basketball or baseball. But girls, it is very important to make them have a strong Uh, identity of who they are otherwise some point later in life they may be manipulated number seven self-actualization we all have self 
actualization needs, we want to realize our personal potential. We have goals and ambitions, but without the support structure, the journey of self-actualization can be a tough one. Do you get that? You know, what I, I like to think about is, and I'm trying to think of the name of the cartoon, it escapes me. But in any event, the, the uh, cartoonist, he was a graduate of uh, out west, very prestigious school. But anyway, he, he got his degree and he came home and he told his mother, he wanted to be a cartoonist and she supported him. I wonder how many people would have supported him after just paying for four years of college. And then he comes in and tells you he wants to be a cartoonist. Uh, a lot of, there might've been a lot of cussing and screaming going on in the house. <laughs> After you just paid for four years of college. I wonder and if that was Doonesbury. I think it was. It was very political cartoon. Yes, yeah. it is. Doonesbury. Yeah. Yes, that's what it was. Oh, uh, I thought it was, uh, uh, I love that story because I, I thought about how incredible it was that uh, she was open to that. I can tell you for sure. Beyond the shadow of a doubt, <laughs> if I had graduated, after I graduated from college, if I had told my mom and dad I was going to be a cartoonist, ooh, my Lord, there would have been a, a, a barnstorm, a fire. From a very young age, I wanted to be a veterinar veterinarian. And uh, by the time I got into high school, I was already doing puppet shows at birthday parties and making puppets and stuff. And I... I told my parents, I said, you know what? I think I'm doing what I'm going to be doing, you know? And they said, I don't know. You know, it, 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 that, you know, it's a lot of money, a little at a time here and there, but it was like, I was doing a couple shows a week for a while at a hundred dollars a show yeah, at birthday parties for kids with, with the puppets. And, and I thought that's what I was going to do, but then I ruined everything. I got into radio yeah, and I liked it. But, you know, it's just like puppetry. You hide behind the stage. You, can, you can't see us on the radio in here. Now, if I get in front of the camera, you can see me because we, we've modernized our radio station with cameras. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. Uh, eight, fulfillment of basic needs. Under normal circumstances, the basic needs of every member of a family should be met. The family is important in our lives as it ensures our basic needs are met. Okay, uh, basic needs. Number nine, if you wanna call in to talk about any of these, talk about your family, uh, I'll be more than happy to entertain your, your conversation. Support. The family is a support system. We can be sure we'll have access to for the rest of our lives. We can always count on family. We get support from our families when we are sick, broke, heartbroken, etc. We all will face hard times in life. And during these hard times, we'll need someone to lean on. This is where the family never fails in most cases. In most cases. <laughs> Sometimes you, your family can let you down. But we're not going to talk about that. And last, number 10. Memories. Memories stay with us for as long as we live. They are like our invisible companions, reminding us of the past and preparing us for the future. We spend a lot of time with our families and make a lot of memories in the process. 
these memories form a part of who we are. They affect our behavior and subtly affect our choices. Memories. Conclusion. There are many more reasons that can be discussed, but the ones discussed are the main reasons that we all can relate to. And we got Jay on line one. Okay, how you doing, Rudy? Okay. Yeah, yeah. You brought back a lot of memories. Uh, talking about the relationships, family. Uh, in one sense, I was kind of lo- very fortunate, and in another sense, I wasn't really had to had to climb a steep hill because I was a. Uh, oh, you know, my, I didn't know that my father wasn't around when I was when I was growing up. Him and my mother got divorced when I was about five or six years old. Uh, so I, I it was really my mother that, that kind of raised me, and the thing that really helped me a lot. To, uh, you know, with the family thing was uh, extended family and uh, neighbors, people that came in and, and, and kind of, you know, I, we, we were very fortunate. We moved into a, a public housing that was just was just built in a predominantly all white neighborhood in Brooklyn, Canarsie. Canarsie was prominent. It was all probably all Italian and Irish, and they hated when they that project when we moved into that project. They didn't want they didn't want any people of color there. But we we fought, you know, the youngsters fought, fought going to school, coming from school, until they got used to us, and uh, didn't, you know, and everything worked out pretty fine. But the thing that really helped me a lot was uh, the men in that neighbor in that in that project. They took uh, us under our uh, wings. They knew that we needed uh, some, you know, you know, a man's, you know, just some advice how to be a man, how to grow up and be, you know, responsible. And I got I got that from some you know a couple of guys, you know people that really cared about us, and uh, it was it was beautiful. And they even formed a basketball team out there in the project. These guys, and uh, you know we won quite a few tournaments, and we you know we we got pretty good. And one of my buddies, the guy that I grew up with, I talked to him right to the day, and he was after I left and went in the military. He uh, he coached the next group of kids, and one of those kids that he he, he uh, coached Bernard. Was uh, 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 John Sally, who played for the Detroit Pistons and became a superstar. And uh, I guess he, I guess he made uh, you know, you know, he was just everything. Him and his brothers, they they they, uh, they were much younger than me, but they uh, they grew up there in, in the same project. And Bernard coached them on, and he was had the coach of the basketball team, and uh, they turned out to be uh, tremendous basketball players. And they never forgot him. Right to the day, John Sally contacts him when he has a program or something going on. So it just goes on and on, and you know we just pass it down from one generation to the next. And that that was beautiful. So I'm going to just leave that alone, and I just want to give you a little bit about my uh, upbringing. Uh, I'm thinking about uh, Rubio and uh, Chris Demings, and I heard uh, Rubio complaining about uh, about these top secret clearance messages. That was left in the Mar a Lago there at uh, Trump's resort, right? And he he tried to say that it was nothing like it's just like you know returning a, a book, you know returning some books late to the library. <laughs> and, and he's on the and dig this he's on the intelligence committee in the in the Senate. He is the chairman of the intelligence committee. Yes, I've heard that. And I mean, this is so stupid. Yes, that he it would is. say something like that just to keep on to keep in good books with with a criminal. That he would he would say that, you know, because eventually he, Donald Trump will be he, he will be uh, uh, charged, and uh, whatever happens after that, that's that's going to be up to him and his people. But uh, it's it's getting deeper and it's getting deeper, and they're just digging a big a bigger hole and a bigger hole because from what I learned, and I learned you know from you know I was actually in it, I was I was in it, I was dealing with the, the top secret crypto uh, messages and equip you know uh, messages and different uh, things that uh, in the military and they used to always preach to us all the time about uh, if we leak it out you're looking at going to weapons work so that was uh, you know that you know if that's not enough to scare you have to death it seemed like it would have scared him and whoever else was working with trump there at mar lago yeah i guess they didn't care i right. guess they really did not care huh i didn't hear you i said yeah yeah, yeah. They, i guess they just didn't didn't care about it uh, they figured that they were above above the law. Above, you know, I guess they figured if, if Trump can get away with it, we can fool around with it too. And so uh, that's what that's where we are. And this this judge, I can't figure out where she's coming from. I think she's from Colombia somewhere. 
uh, Connor or whatever her name is, she's a judge that was appointed, and she wanted to stop the whole investigation because she said, uh, you, you know, you might need a master because Trump said, get a master. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and, and you know, then uh, he's, trying to, he's trying to make the government pay for the master. And you know, it just goes on and on, the madness. But it's getting deeper because they, they got more stuff that's coming out. And some of these those those those, those uh, classified documents uh, will, will only only a handful of people are supposed to even look at it. Can in the, in the, you, uh, in imagine, the Defense Department? Huh? Can you imagine what his legal bills are right now? Yeah, I'm telling you. I would like to it have a tenth, just a tenth of the mm-hmm. money that he's spending on legal bills. That would put me in Fat City, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's, it's piling up on him, man. And you know, and these guys, and these people are still running behind him like look like little puppy dogs. And it's just it's just it's get to, it's get to the point where it's getting ridiculous. And I just keep waiting for the see when the shoe comes drop. I'm just glad that Garland finally, you know, he, I guess he, you know you can't you know you never know what's going on in the Justice Department because they don't they don't leak out or they don't talk about what they're doing. They just do. They do their investigating background checks and get everything, you know, cross their T's and dot their I's and get everything by the numbers. That's the way they operate. They've always been that way, you know, except for when Bush was in. I mean, when uh, uh, Trump was in with his you know, attorney general, who was, you know, this, he was so he sold out to Trump. But uh, out before that and right all the way down to the, on the, down the line, all of them were pretty uh, pretty sharp, and they did not play games. You know, they, if, you, if you did something wrong, you were, you were convicted. So well, it just Jay, goes thank, on and on. Thank you for the call. I got another caller. And we got Sean. Hi, Rudy. How you doing? Okay. First of all, the I, I got in on, late on the uh, uh, list you were saying about how to take care of your family and everything. But I got to tell you, you're spot on with it. All right? You, what you did with your son, the only thing you left out there was you also set a good example for your son. Um. Uh, I know you said it was a struggle with him keeping him away from everything. And I hope people were listening to that whole list. It was just a beautiful thing what you were saying about how to build the nuclear family. I mean, of course, you and I usually disagree on pretty much everything. but <laughs> <laughs> And you know I've called in a few times. But uh, you're so spot on with it. And the only thing I would add is is that you don't owe family, and I always I have two sons also, and one was the smartest kid in the world, knew he was never going to get in trouble because he was smarter than any kid that was in trouble, and the other one was exactly what you were describing, and he's 35 now and living a great life, you know, uh, family of his own, but he struggled in his teen years with the same thing. Thank God for football gave him a sense of same with my know. son it was football yep uh he played for centennial and he did very well uh first kid from there that went for a division one scholarship uh, but the other thing i used to tell them all the time he used to hang out i'd see him with some kids i mean there were some kids in the neighborhood that the parents weren't very good, and he said, well, we were just feeding them lunch. I said, well, that's good. But I want you to remember, someday you're going to have to make a choice. You're either going to visit them on visiting day in jail or you're going to be their roommate. And I always beat that drum constantly, all right? But you did the right thing. Now, on the other comment, uh, your caller that was just before me, I don't remember his name. What was his name? Jay. Okay, because I want to write it down. Because he said that there was a criminal that was uh, at Mar-a-Lago. All right. Jay was his name. So when he actually gets convicted, Trump, I want Jay to call back up and congratulate himself. But you can't (laughs) call somebody a criminal until they're actually convicted. And we do not have all the facts in. And anybody on either side of this story that is guessing is doing themselves a disservice. Okay. Because we have two sides of government right now that our average person, you, me, Cliff, Jay, that are never going to get the story right now because it's so divided. 
all right, that each side is going to tell BS, okay? And anybody that tells you any different, because I have a bunch of conservative friends that will tell you one story and a bunch of liberal friends that will tell you another story, and neither one of them have the information to do either one, including half of our representatives, and I mean both sides of Congress, uh, that are coming out and pontificating on TV. The best thing to do is go, let's let this wash out and see really what's going to do good for us out of this. Well, here's, so what, come, here's what I want to say about that, Jay. Sean. I, I, Sean, I'm sorry. Out of all I, the things that are floating around right now, I would agree with you except for one. There should be no politics with the documents found at Mar-a-Lago. I that, agree with you. Okay, that's not, a, that's not a political issue. If he had those documents that belong to us, the American people, in violation, then uh, I think his butt should go to jail. But here you go. You, you stated that perfectly because you used the word if, all right? So if I actually was caught selling uh, 45 pounds of cocaine, I should go to jail. But until I go to court and until they prove the evidence, it's still an if. So you don't call somebody a criminal and say that they should be in jail until that is proven. I don't care who it is. All right. All right? Well, okay. All right. I'll 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 concede that part. But because I just let's, I just let's admit let's admit that it happens way too often with the common person. It's the reason I object to the death penalty because when DNA came out, there were so many people released from yes. death row. All right, and most of them were minorities yes. that were scapegoated into oh. That guy's been in the neighborhood. He must have raped and killed that girl, all right? And they did, could not afford good defense attorneys. You do not kill somebody. The only time I ever agree with the death penalty, if I see somebody shoot somebody, I have no problem killing them, okay? Uh, but even on a jury, unless I'm an eyewitness, I could never vote to kill somebody because you don't know the system is railroading them, okay? Okay. So we have to be very careful, as we should have. I was very careful with Bill Clinton, all right, who was found guilty with evidence of perjury, all right, even though he kind of weaseled out of it. But he got the appropriate <laughs> sentence. He got the appropriate sentence that he should have gotten, which was a censure. That's all that deserved. It was way too overblown, and I know Ken Starr just passed away, and he handled it. I think, in a, in a decent way, all right? I was also the same way, and I was a young, young man when Nixon was, uh, and, and I always said, it was political what was going on with Nixon. He should have been punished, whether the punishment held. Spiro Agnew was worse than Nixon. Yes, he Let's was, it. but I got to let right? you go, Sean. I got another caller. All right, you have fun. Thank you for calling. Winnie. Hey, how you doing? My friend, how you doing today? I thought, I thought, I thought you forgot about me. <laughs> no, I didn't forget about you. Sean was was having a good time. I know, I know Jay was there, too. And I'm happy for your callers and everything. You know, Jay was saying something about John Stella. I remember him in the NBA. I, like, I, like, I watched the NBA. You do? I remember him back in the day, John yeah, Sally. Yeah, John Sally, yeah. He was a good, oh, yeah. good ball player. I like football. I like NFL, too. <laughs> uh, you like know what? Sports, I just so. I just saw a statistic the other day that 47% of the people watching the NFL are women. Oh. How about that? 47%? Yeah, I, like yeah I, just, I just heard that statistic the other day. 47%? Like yeah. They, uh, women, women like football. Oh, yeah. 
I, and uh, but I did get here from Jay and, and everybody. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, okay, uh, just that to the, you know, we, I think to my kids, I think women have the right to do what they want with their body, like a, a bolster, and that's their choice. Okay, he they say something on the news that he's trying to fight against it, by you know, by. You try to fight against uh, it's a motion, but I get no pursuit of loan forgiveness. I think that's what that is. Well, you uh, talking about you to t- fight a fight against that student loan forgiveness? Are you talking about the uh, guy from South Carolina? No, I think the senator, our governor. Who who are you talking about? The senator, our our governor. Oh, our governor. Uh, I try to fight against uh, student loan forgiveness. Yeah. You know, Biden try to try to pass to get a pass for a student loan forgiveness. I think they said just going to try to fight against. I want to have a vote it, to either well, student it, loan. Well, it, it, it is. There is not just our governor. There's members of Congress that are trying to find a way to stop student loan forgiveness now i don't know if you've been listening to me recently phyllis was on here uh uh, a week or so ago and she was dead set against it and and we and he and she and i had a discussion you know some some people are frustrated that uh people get student loan forgiveness and uh they didn't get it and but that's a, a, a sad reason for not the, wanting to the help opponents people. that I've encountered. I've noticed that they paid off their student my, loans. My teeth so they didn't it. get it either. They had to pay it uh, back because it was back then. But now, uh, you know, and I, you know, I think that's a good, good. I, I think that's a good thing. Yeah, Winnie. Well, thank you, Winnie. I got another caller. Oh, okay. Bye. Thank you, Steve. How you doing, Rudy? Okay. I wanted to bring up a couple of things you missed that can destroy a family overnight. Okay. Uh, in my family, my father was a Catholic. My mother was Masonic. Uh, in case you didn't know, those two don't beliefs don't mix. So our family blew apart right at the beginning. And then it got worse as we were isolated in another state, didn't see our grandparents. We had none of those support systems. So basically... We grew up on our own. And now as adults, we're all successful, but I wouldn't screw with any one of us. I mean, we learned as kids that you better be able to fight and survive for yourself and forget the other guy's feelings because if you don't take him out, he'll take you out. So there is a different side of America. Yours was Ozzy and Harriet. Most people don't know who they are, but they were. (laughs) I do. I, I like to think of my family more as the, the warlords of whatever. Uh, they were crazy. I stay away from them. I haven't seen my family in years. I haven't talked to them, even my own daughter. Uh, when I cut the money off from everybody, they cut me off. And that's society today. Well, how long has it you been know? since you've seen your daughter? Pardon me? Four oh, years. Four years? Haven't talked to her, haven't seen her, wrote her a couple of letters, no reply. Granddaughter, they've weaponized her mind. Lawyer tells me, hey, you can sue him under 825, elderly abuse. What, am I going to put my daughter in jail? I don't think so. Um, but th- that's America today. We are a broken, divided country. who are more hung up on being an R or a D than we are on being an A, an American. And until you stop this something American and start saying American of, like, I'm American of Irish descent, that's it, period. I'm an American first. And the other thing is society, the rules they've made, that the student loan program, people are all mad because they paid theirs off and somebody got a free education. The point they missed was the educated guy will help guide America forward. Amen. And if he's not... If he's in debt where he can't survive, he's not going to be his best. Ab- and he's not Amen. going to perform his best. So when these people say that, I have to look at him and kind of growl. Um, I, I'll be honest. i got to be transparent. I had a scholarship to college, but I earned it. 
Now, are they mad at me because I didn't have to pay for my education, but a company thought I was valuable enough to pay for it for me? So there's another flip of the coin. So, you know, what you said, those 10 points, a lot of them were nice, but I don't think a lot of them are real today at all. I, I think that's there's, there, I have known people with families like yours, but oh, I, yeah, I guess what, what I was talking about was in generality about families, and I think that applies, uh, but I, I don't detra- distract anything from what you've said because I certainly have known people who've grown up in well, very you know, difficult situations. You know, I was in law enforcement. And for a while, and one of the biggest problems I saw was the single parent trying to raise the kids because of the court system. That's another factor that people don't bring in. When you get a divorce, all of a sudden the court system is the new ruler of the house, so to speak. And that can screw a family up like you wouldn't believe. Yeah. Visitation and child support. So when I started Dads, we corrected that 15 years ago. But that's what it takes. You have to get off your cellulite, and you have to be an American and get involved in your government. Agreed. And I just found out Monday that St. Lucie County is the highest tax county in Florida. We pay more taxes. If you live in Fort St. Lucie, it's even worse. You're paying city and county. But together, we are the highest tax county in Florida. Check it out. I will check that out. I will check that out. Yeah, check it out. There's four speakers Monday night's meeting that brought that up, the TV people were there to film that. Uh, because we are incurred, incurring tons of debt, giving away free this and free that to business, thinking we're going to build a city. All we're building is sprawl, and I don't know if you've driven out west lately, but uh, today I saw about a mile and a half back up waiting to get school kids at St. Lucie West and Cashmere. Oh, yeah. That happens every day. So, you know, in life, I've been alone all my life. I'm still alone. I have no support system, and I'm disabled. I'm my support system. My neighbor told me today, he said, you know, we look over at you mowing the lawn and stuff at your age with your disability. We can't figure out how you do it. And I tell him, listen, if you stop doing it, you're dead. You have to keep moving. And that's the same thing with a family. If they stop communicating or if they take a stand that they won't budge off of, the family's done. Because you'll never got, have harmony after that. I got to take a break, Steve. Yeah. Well, it was take, nice talking with you, Rudy. Good talking good day. to you, too, man. Don't be a stranger. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, uh, with that, we'll take a little break here. Just a programming note, our sister station has some sports activity coming up tonight at 640. It's already 10 minutes in progress. Our sister station, WSTU, has Philadelphia at Miami. Friday night, we have Martin County at Treasure Coast High School Football with Greg White and Dan Cuomo. But you're listening to the African-American scene right now with Rudy Howard. And Rudy will be right back. This is Rudy Howard, your independent insurance agent. I now specialize in Medicare, health insurance, and small group insurance. That number is 475-8856. Same great service, more flexible hours. Just give me a call, 475-8856. At Martin County Roofing, we build trust with quality work. I'm Derek Alcius, owner of Martin County Roofing with more than 20 years experience in the roofing and construction industry. Whether you need a repair, restoration, or a new roof, both residential or commercial, we offer a seamless client experience, and we serve the entire Treasure Coast. Fully licensed and insured, we specialize in tile, metal, shingle, or flat roof. Contact us today for a free estimate at martincountyroofing.com. I'm injury attorney Taylor Hoskins from the law firm of Hoskins, Turco, Lloyd & Lloyd with some big news. 
that our firm has a new Port St. Lucie office located at the corner of St. Lucie West Boulevard and Country Club Drive in St. Lucie West. So if you're in PSL and you or someone you know is injured in any type of accident, call us for help navigating all the frustrations in our post-COVID world. So call 464-4600, click htllfirm.com, or stop by our new office and put our hometown team to work for you. The Indian River State tradition of champions is continuing as we enter the 2022-23 season. Hi, I'm Monique Joseph, freshman forward from West Palm Beach at Indian River State College. Basketball fans will get a chance to see us 15 times this season. Our home opener is Tuesday, November 1st against ASA. Watch our star sophomore guard, Tavi Habib, lead the Pioneers against this season. The tradition of champions continues here at the river, on the court, and in the classroom. WPTV's First Alert Weather on WPSL is brought to you by Seacoast Air Conditioning. Family owned and operated on the Treasure Coast since 1982, online at seacoastair.com. And now with a look at our forecast, here's meteorologist Kate Wenzel. Showers and storms possible through 9 p.m. tonight, then we'll see clearing skies with overnight lows dropping down into the mid-70s. On Monday, winds out of the east at 5 to 10 with a 60% chance of scattered storms mainly after 2 p.m. Daytime highs in the upper 80s with heat index values close to 100. I'm WPTV First Alert Meteorologist Kate Wenzel for WPSL 1590, the talk of the Treasure Coast. Living in Florida is paradise until your AC breaks down. Seacoast Air Conditioning is family owned and operated for over 40 years. Seacoast Air Conditioning offers service in hours, not days. We answer the phones, show up on time, and fix the problem right the first time. Comfort crisis, don't roast, call Seacoast. Hi, this is Rudy Howard, your independent insurance agent. Medicare open enrollment begins October 15th. You should take a look at your plan and make sure you are getting all the benefits that are available to you. If you have straight Medicare, now's your chance to enroll in a medical advantage plan, medical supplement plan, or change your prescription drug plan. I represent most of the major carriers in our area, so I can find a plan for you. There is no charge for consultation, so give me a call, 772-475-8856, 772-475-8856, or email me at rudy34953 at gmail.com. Now we return to the African American scene. Once again, here's your host, Rudy Howard. Uh, I have uh, a couple of topics here. One of which I'm not going to get into because I couldn't give it justice in the five and a half minutes that's left. Uh -huh. uh, what I am going to talk about, though, is a uh, due to the pandemic measures. There has been a reduction in poverty and a reduction in uninsured people. Uh, now, this was the result of the pandemic policies they, they put in place. The expanded child tax credit ended in December, just as inflation was starting to climb to historic heights. Uh, the policy supporting more people getting health insurance is set to run out in a few months. More than 15 million people could lose Medicaid, according to an estimate from the Department of Health and Human Services. In fact, one group already is seeing more poverty in 2021 and that is seniors to what extent did all of this government transfer of income contribute to inflation i think it is still a question so while there is the banging of the drum saying that Biden has created inflation, there is 
the thought brokers think there's still a question about that. Among our peer countries, we have the highest rates of uninsurance in the world and also poor health outcomes. So among our other countries, rich countries, we have the highest rate of uninsured in the world, and we also have the poor health outcomes. Now, conservatives tell us all the time that we have extraordinary health care. But how can we have extraordinary health care uh, if we have uh, so many people that can't access it? And one of the things that people say all the time is, well, we don't want to be like Canada where you have to wait. And I don't know if I told you this before, but I've I developed a Facebook friend uh, from Canada. And I had heard that story so much that I finally talked to her, asked her to have a conversation with me. And she did. And she said, I would not trade my health care for yours. Yes, we pay higher taxes, but we're able to get our health concerns taken care of. I had a neighbor who just sold his property after like 20 years. He was from Canada. I would have asked him, but he's been kind of like in and out over the last few years one time because he had cancer and and he told me that he couldn't have afforded to get the treatment in the United States that he was able to get in Canada. I think we have to kind of rethink our priority as Dr. William Barber likes to say a budget is a moral document. Would you keep that in mind? A budget is a moral document. I like that. A budget is a moral document. Yeah. I'd like to thank you so much for tuning in to the African American scene. I got some more topics for you. God bless and be safe. And I will see you next Wednesday right here for the African American scene. And we can't wait. The next African American scene, one week from tonight at 6.05. Don't miss it. In the meantime, you can binge watch the Murdy Howard's African American scene on YouTube. Go to WPSLTV.com and look for the uh, the playlist of the African American scene with Rudy Howard on WPSL TV YouTube. This is WPSL Port St. Lucie, the talk of the Treasure Coast, Jimmy Fela. Coming up after CBS News, it's 7 o'clock.